you have a serious injury that happened at a business, I mean, um, you know, you should look into it, right? Um, because oftentimes it could have been prevented. And oftentimes under the law, the business is responsible for those injuries. If you're injured in a fall on a commercial property, do you have a claim? We're going to talk to attorney David Schuster about that on today's Ask the Lawyer. David, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Glad to be here. So first up, as an injury attorney, you've handled lots of premises liability cases. Can you give us an overview of what happens when someone is injured on commercial property? Sure, yeah. Uh, what happens is, you know, it does, if you're injured and you happen to be at a business, okay, um, that doesn't mean that they're responsible for your injury, obviously. Um, and, and so what happens is, uh, you know, there's, there's things to be determined, like what, what caused the injury, Did you know, was... was there essentially was there an unreasonably dangerous condition on the premises that somebody knew or should have known about that somebody ideally, if you have that situation, someone, they did have notice of it. Uh, so you're looking for, you know, only to hold somebody responsible under the law. I mean, you know, just reasonably, it has to make sense, right? I mean, the business owner uh, has to have had a dangerous condition on, on there, on property, and that somebody knew or should have known about it. Do you think that people have the wrong idea about slip and fall claims? Can you give us some examples of injuries that you've seen and are they serious? Yes. Uh, yeah, there definitely is a little bit of, uh, you know, when you, when you hear the term slip and fall, um, you know, I, I started off uh, actually as an attorney practicing insurance defense. OK, so so we would defend these claims. Right. And so certainly back in those days as an early attorney, you know, then we really were uh, cynical about slip and falls, if you will. Right. Uh, and, and I understand that. And there are, you know, there are instances where people can can, you know, uh, be dramatic and, and, you know, of course, file, you know, frivolous claims. Uh, but in fact, if, if, if you have a serious injury that happened at a business, I mean, um, you know, you should look into it, right? Um, because oftentimes it could have been prevented. And oftentimes under the law, the business is responsible for those injuries. So what constitutes a dangerous condition in a slip and fall claim? Can you give us some examples of when a business might be liable for that dangerous condition and when they might not be? Sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I guess the, mo the most common one might be, you know, something that's spilled on the ground, right? So you've got uh, something that's wet on the ground. And, um, and, and so that, uh, if you, depending upon the, uh, the floor surface, right, if it's a tile floor, that's obviously dangerous. You know, you, if I see water in my house, I'm like, whoa, you know, let me clean this up immediately, obviously, if you have a wood floor. So it's just something uh, that that is dangerous, even if it's just water on a tile floor. OK. And, and um, you know, but the employer, again, needs to have notice of that. And so if you've got a, a, a customer going down the, down the aisle and they spill something and, and they don't say anything, and they keep rolling. I mean, that doesn't make the employer responsible unless, you know, maybe employees walked, walked by it on the camera, you know, several times and, and, and didn't do anything or, you know, or, or it was reported, right? I'm the guy that spilled something and I just kind of like go tell the store manager something spilt and then they don't do anything about it, right? And so it has to be, you have to have that notice component uh, of something. But a dangerous condition, I mean, yeah, it's as easy as water on the floor uh, if there's a cord running across the hallway um, or, you know, let's say if there's, there's a, a small set of stairs that is not built to code, it's supposed to have a hand rail, but it doesn't, right? You know, that's, that's bad for the employer. That's going to be, you know, potentially negligence per se, because there's a code violation there. And so it pretty much runs the gamut. Um, it's something, uh, could be something simple, or it could be something, you know, really extreme where, you know, there's just uh, unstable uh, something, you know, chairs that are not stable or anything like that, that has happened. We, you know, we definitely have seen it all uh, in, in, our, in our time here. So what should somebody do if they're injured on a property? Kind of walk us through those steps. Do they need to go directly to the doctor? Do they need to report it to the property owner? Walk us through what they should do. Sure. Yeah. I mean, so obviously if you fall down, I mean, your first thing is like, did somebody video this? Right. And then you're just thinking, you know, or, you know, because it's embarrassing. Right. Uh, and then you're you're wondering how bad you're hurt. If it obviously if it's a serious fall and, and something bad happens, your leg snaps. I mean, then it's pretty much just. There's the, the consideration is, is immediate medical treatment. But if it is something where you go down and you, and you just kind of know that that wasn't good, but you're kind of embarrassed and, and you don't want to make a scene and you're, and you're able to get up and walk away, uh, so to speak, but maybe your knee's a little sore, um, you know, the best thing to do to answer your question is, is to, you know, take a look at what it was, obviously, that made you 
made you fall. Uh, go ahead and take a picture. Obviously, you're going to report it to somebody, right? Um, it, because you don't know if you really mess something up during that fall. Um, you want to get the store manager, anybody that's responsible as an employee there at the business to uh, document it. Hey, I fell here. I think it was because of this thing over here. Um, and, and then, you know, they'll do a report probably. As far as medical treatment, I mean, that's just like it is with any kind of injury or, or ailment. I mean, you want to just do what's reasonable. You don't want to sit at home with with just an, an aching knee for uh, seven to ten days. I mean, you want to go in and have it looked at. There's no requirement that you seek medical medical treatment immediately. It's just whatever's reasonable, whatever you need to go see your regular doctor and and follow up. I mean, always the first priority is to you know get treated and get better. So, can you explain the process at your law office for these types of claims to get people the money that they need uh, to pay their medical bills and other damages that they might have sustained in the injury? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's it's more of a of a maze than you might think. But uh, but yeah, the process really, firstly, is you know hopefully you got we get to we get with somebody where not too much time has passed and like i say uh, you know where there was a report made and there was some photographs i mean those are again that's the reason why you want to do those things they're all helpful uh, not required but helpful uh, the first step is investigation just figuring out based on those photos what's going on you know see if you can uh, contact uh, the business and and you know if it has been reported um, and and make sure that that this is a good case because it was something that was dangerous that they that they uh, and there's some evidence that they knew about it or if it's some some deal where some area is unkept then they should have known about it they should have been keeping it up it was their duty to, to keep up this area to keep it clean and, and then it, it did create this unreasonably dangerous uh, condition and someone fell. And so investigation and, and then the client is just getting treated. Those are kind of the first steps. All right, David, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Yeah, thanks. Always a pleasure. And that's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been David Schuster. If you want to ask him about your situation, call the number on the screen. Thanks for watching. I'm Molly Hendrickson for Ask the Lawyers.